tonight. Jeff Idelson joins us, president of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Welcome to the booth. I can't believe that both you and you were here yesterday after Sunday. How'd you get here so fast? He well, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I just uh, I got up and left Cooperstown after we had a, our Hall of Famers dinner where the guys Piazza and Griffey got their rings and mm -hmm. took care of a, co a couple of sons and I drove down to Newark and uh, caught a morning flight. Wow. And Al, you you got out of Cooperstown that night. Well, Jeff's got, you know, he's running the whole thing, so he had to stick around a little bit, sweep <laughs> up and close the tables up and hang out. Um, you know what? I, that was my first. I've been up there a few times, Jeff, right. as you know, and the first time I was at an actual induction and I couldn't have been more impressed with the flow. I thought 50,000 people in a little Tony town of upstate New York. Right. I mean, excellent. I mean, really, really well done. A great baseball event, as you know, of course, you're, you've been running the, the hall for a long time. Is it easy to figure out a way to control the flow of how, what, what does the town multiply by on, on induction weekend? Well, we were uh about 25 times our population. We're a town of 1,800, one stoplight, as you know, and uh, it works well, though. And, and and the fans, you know, you manage expectations. Uh, fans know what to expect. You know, it's not only Griffey and Piazza up there, but it's another 48 returning Hall of Famers as well. So that's what draws. And when the fans come up, they it's their baseball cards coming to life, as you know. And it's it's just a, it's been a great vibe. The Hall of Famers come back every year, so they know how it flows. And uh, yeah, you just hope Mother Nature's having a good weekend, you know. And the, the speeches were exceptional. Watching the uh, the fathers of both Piazza and Griffey uh, on MLB Network, uh, just anybody that uh, had a father that played or helped them uh, along in their careers, uh, that was a very emotional moment. Two very emotional moments. Yeah, you know, you see that every year. I mean, the guys always come in, in the, you know, in the winter when they get in. Oh, I'm not going to cry. I don't cry. It's like, <laughs> you're gonna, look, Nolan Ryan's crying. You're crying. So, you know, <laughs> everybody cries and, uh, you know, it's emotional. It's, it's culmination of your career. You know, to have your dad and your mom. If you're lucky enough to have them both live in the front row. And as you said, Rich, both of those guys, their dads and their, you know, in Junior's case, both their moms were instrumental. And I think it took Ken about 20 seconds to lose it. And Mike wasn't far behind. Freddie Galvis with a base hit. And Tom Kohler trying to keep him close. You know, Jeff, I said this as uh, I was up with uh, Harold Reynolds and we covered it at MLB Network that this wonderful game of ours all different shapes and sizes and strengths and different uh, athletic ability but it, it couldn't have been more polar opposite if it was Ken Griffey Jr. first number one overall in the draft you had a guy in the 62nd round that was a favor pick uh, Tommy Sorter and his friendship with his Mike Piazza's father I mean did did you sense another level of, of baseball greatness of how uh, anybody could kind of do it no matter where you are exactly right I mean it's uh Liner to left, Yelich there. Galvis retreats to first. I mean, you know, and uh, Mike opened up the speech, I think, perfectly, saying, you know, can you, your number one pick, you could have rested on your laurels, but you worked your butt off. And then Mike had to work his butt off, obviously, being, you know, there are only 43 guys drafted after him. Only 43 other players are drafted after him. So this is a guy that, you know, had to overcome all sorts of odds. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite a dichotomy to have the first pick and virtually the last pick in back to back draft share stage in Cooperstown. And the amazing thing is, Griffey is the first overall pick to get to the Hall of Fame. That's, yeah. a, that's stunning to me. Now, Chipper Jones might be the second, mm -hmm. but uh, you would think the number one overall, that's a sliding catch by Rojas. And the second out here you would think the number one overall would have uh, arrived in Cooperstown a lot sooner than Griffey. Well you know what it just underscores how difficult it is to make it to Paul and uh, you know 18,600 players have been in the history of the game since uh, the National League was born in 1876 and you get uh, you know 217 in the Hall of Fame so it's one percent uh, and it's incredibly difficult to get in so it, it's just really uh, when a guy gets there it's not by mistake let's put it that way. Griffey is the first Mariner to get there. The Marlins don't have anyone there yet. Although Gary Sheffield has said if he gets there he'd like to be considered for his work as a Marlin. I know players don't necessarily get the choice. How what's that. How does that work. You, you just try to guide them at the end. You know you want them to make a good decision and a smart decision and not uh, one with their head versus their heart. And what we have to do is the folks who run the, the Hall of Fame is think 50 years down the line for instance. Uh, you look at uh, Ty Cobb who played his entire career in Detroit except for one year with Philadelphia with the A's at the end and if he came into plaque gallery and saw him in a Philadelphia A's cap he'd be saying what does that mean why would that happen so 
you know, with Junior, it was basically Mariners, Reds, or no logo. With Piazza, it was, uh, you know, Dodgers, Mets, or I suggested the backwards helmet, you know, with the eye black in case he didn't want to do either one of those with the mask on the top. But he wanted to go Mets. Uh, you know, Junior wanted to go uh, with Mariners, as he said, your, you know, your first team is always your best. And uh, both guys are happy, and we are. Well, let's hope uh, that Mr. Sheffield has that choice to make or has some input and has that decision to make uh, in a few years. Here, scoreless ball game. Tom Kohler, Philly's getting their second crack against him.